Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm so glad you could join us today. Um, so now we're in week two of our series on the four agreements. Now, whether or not you are currently reading the book or reviewing Don Miguel's work, this is an opportunity to take stock of where we are, recognize what spiritual practices we are presently utilizing, and remind ourselves once again of these four powerful practices. During this series, we're touching base with the what agreements we've made in life. As the Toltec spiritual teaching reminds us, we must agree with something to have it be true for us. Last week, we looked at the first agreement, being impeccable with our word, to use our word to build up, to speak with honesty and integrity, to let our yes be our yes and our no be our no. And most of all, to keep this agreement with ourselves so that we can extend it to others. The second agreement is about the thoughts, actions, and words others have about us and how to handle them. So the second agreement is don't take anything personally. Now we're looking at the word again today, but this time it's the words of others. Don't take it personally. I have to say that since I first read this book in um, around 1997, working these agreements have had a profound influence on my life. Each agreement holds value, but the two that touched me the most were this agreement, don't take anything personally, and the one that we'll cover next week, which is don't make assumptions. Don't take anything personally. How easy it is to forget this. I can't tell you how often I remind myself of this. Don't take it personally. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to disconnect from one another. We couldn't possibly do that because we're all connected. What it does mean is that we disconnect ourselves from the choices of others and we can choose to not absorb their words. Ultimately, whatever the interaction is between myself and another person, it contains the opportunity of a lesson should I choose to allow it. We ask ourselves, what do I have to learn for this? Because everything, everything in the world offers a gift for learning. With the choices of, I, of others, the idea of not taking it personally gives us great freedom. Don Miguel Ruiz wrote, whatever happens around you, don't take it personally. If I see you on the street and I say, hey, you're so stupid without knowing you, it's not about you, it's about me. If you take it personally, then perhaps you believe you're stupid. You take it personally because you agreed with what was said. As soon as you agree, the poison goes through you and you are trapped in the dream of hell. During the period of our education or domestication, we learned to take everything personally. We think we're responsible for everything. He goes on to say, nothing other people do is because of you. It's because of themselves. All people live in their own dream, in their own mind. They are in a completely different world from the one we live in. When we take something personally, we make the assumption that they know what is in our world. And we try to impose our world on their world. Even when a situation seems so personal, even if others insult you directly, it has nothing to do with you. What they say, what they do, and the opinions they give are according to the agreements they have in their own minds. Their point of view comes from all the programming they received during their domestication. So whatever someone else thinks or says or does has nothing to do with us. We might be familiar with the term projection makes perception. That means that what we unconsciously believe inside, we will project and see in the world. A Course in Miracles says projection makes perception. The world you see is what you gave it, nothing more than that. It is the witness to your state of mind 
the outside picture of an inward condition. So as a man thinketh, so does he perceive. Therefore, seek not to change the world, but choose to change your mind about it. And that so supports what Don Miguel Ruiz is teaching. Someone else, whatever they're thinking, saying, or doing has nothing to do with us. It comes from within them. But, you know, we do, as human beings, feel offended. When was the last time you, you felt offended? For me, there's one instance that stands out that occurred over 40 years ago when my eldest son was three months old. I went to my ex-husband's uh, company picnic. I was wearing a pair of very short shorts. The wife of one of his coworkers came to me and said, your legs are so big. Now I've come to realize that from her perspective, that was a compliment. She was from an area where having big legs was considered attractive. But at the time I was horrified. I remember being very conscious to be gracious and to continue to smile but I was horrified. Why? Because since I was a child, I had been continually ridiculed for the size of my body. And I had not healed yet at that time. So I took it personally and I interpreted her comment as negative. I made her comment, which was neutral, a negative comment. I took it personally. Can you think of the last two or three times you were really, really offended? I know it doesn't sound like the unity thing to do. We think we're supposed to forgive and forget instant, instantly. But if we don't deal with what's going on in the moment, we stuff it in. And it comes out another way when we least expect it. This is called spiritual bypassing. A spiritual bypass or spiritual bypassing is a tendency to use spiritual ideas and practices to sidestep or avoid facing unresolved emotional issues, psychological wounds, and unfinished developmental tasks. The term was introduced in the early 80s by John Wellwood, a Buddhist teacher and psychotherapist. We can't truly be free and at peace until we get a handle on taking things personally. The moment we get offended by someone else's comment, we are no longer free. We are being controlled by the behavior, the words and actions of others. The moment we understand that what other people think about us is none of our business, then we're free. Every time we get offended, we're buying into a misconception that we have about ourselves. We get offended because we believe there's some truth to what the other person is saying and we go into defense mode. We close our hearts and we put up walls. We put so much energy into protecting the exterior that we don't have enough energy to heal the parts of ourselves that are wounded. We spend so much time, so much energy projecting and defending ourselves our ego selves, that we forget about our true self, our divine self. There's a story in scripture in Luke, Luke 9, verses 51 to 62, where Jesus and his followers were going to Jerusalem, but have to go by way of Samaria, which was considered um, a hostile territory. James and John go ahead to find lodging for Jesus and everyone else. Since Samaria was a hostile place, they were refused of lodging, and that upset James and John. They went to Jesus and said, Jesus, would you like us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? They had taken it personal. How dare you refuse us? And Jesus, being Jesus, wasn't taken in by, the, by that and rebuked them and said, no, we're not doing that. He said, don't you know what you are made of? Now, Jesus didn't say, oh, it's beneath me to do that. I'm up here, there, down there. And I can understand why you would say something like that. But he wasn't saying that. He was saying, he was telling them that which you would like to do is beneath the spiritual truth of who you are. 
get back to the spiritual truth about you. You have forgotten what you are made of and who you are. So Jesus was reminding them, don't take it personally. It's not about you. It's about them. You have the opportunity to live from your higher self, to live from your Christ self. This is what he was telling his disciples. We are of God. We are spiritual beings. We are born of universal love and the creative power. But what happened is we have come into the illusion, the dream, that we are something other than one with God, that we are powerless, that we are weak. And we've become insecure and we practice being insecure. When people reject us or are mean to us, we take it personally. We buy into it and use it to feel bad about ourselves. The truth is the infinite love of God is always pouring into us, but we don't recognize it. We buy into the old dream. How many of us were taught to look to the world to get our needs met instead of looking within? I think probably most of us. How many of us were taught that we were personally responsible for someone else's personal reactions to life? I certainly know I was. If it rained, it was my fault. What would happen if our lives, if we take the energy we generate from being offended and use it to be transformed? What if we put our attention on truly knowing what we are made of? Don't take things personally. We hear that and we can believe it intellectually, but what happens the moment someone says, now I don't want you to take this personally. What happens when we hear that? Boom, we take it into our heart because we know that the very next moment, the person is going to let loose on emotion, an emotional lightning bolt and heave it straight into our hearts. So my question is, can you keep your heart open and still not take it personally? Because the truth is, whatever they're thinking or saying has nothing to do with you. But when we shut our hearts down time after time, we believe it's easier to live with our hearts closed. And we're so busy defending the outer, we don't remember the inner, what we're made of. From the moment we were created, we have been divine expressions of creation. We have been the beloved of God. Now is the time for us to use the energy that we have been using to protect ourselves and convert it into energy used to transform ourselves. Are you willing to stop living at the realm of emotions and from the outer and begin to start living from within, from our center? When we live as the victim of other people's opinions about us, whether it's good or bad, it's like living on an emotional roller coaster. We can either live our lives on that roller coaster of emotion, or we can get serious about the transformation at the depth of our being. Every time someone says something effective, offensive, and we take it personally, our spiritual progress stops because we're involved in the drama and the emotion of the offense. We'll never be free as long as we're living in the external, as long as we're protecting ourselves. The only place where true freedom resides is when we know we're created in the image and likeness of God. The image and likeness of love and light. So I invite you to start monitoring what offends you. Because every time someone offends you, they're pointing out a wound that needs to be healed. A wound deep in your soul. They're pointing out an old dream. You can try to protect that wounded place, the old drama, or you can transform it. You can heal it. We can only heal what we shine the light on, what we recognize. Freedom can only be found when we know the glory of the creator is in our center. So if you're feeling offended, be still and be silent. Recognize that your button is getting pushed. 
and be willing to look within to find that wounded place and heal it. Then instead of moving into a place of reaction, remember to open your heart to the truth of who you are, a divine expression of God. Today and this week, I invite you to live in such a way that whatever anyone says or does, it does not disturb the calm that is you, that peace that is you, that truth, that love, that divinity that is you. So I invite you now to close your eyes as we move into meditation. And I invite you to remove anything that's on your lap, put your feet flat on the floor if possible, and open your palms on your lap so they're facing upwards, allowing that energy to flow. And with every breath you take, I invite you to breathe in deeply, feeling that oxygen just energizing every cell in your body. And as you release, feel all the tension being drained from your body. Breathe into any muscle that may feel tense. Breathe into any thought that may be constricting. Allow your breath to energize yet relax you. As you continue to breathe, at a comfortable pace for you. Yes, I live in a world of form and I see things outside of me that I have no control over, but I can control the thoughts and the feelings and the actions of what I do. I choose to live in the moment. I choose to not take anything personally. I choose that when someone may hurl a negative comment to me, I choose to practice compassion and to know that they can only do that because they're in pain. I choose to not make their pain my pain. And I choose to help transform not only my mind, but the actions that can help me extend compassion and love to another person in pain. I remain aware of my own personal agreements about what others think of me. And I bring to mind those things that are most difficult for me to accept. Those negative comments that I make about myself. I bring them to mind with the intention of giving them to the Holy Spirit to transform for me. So right now in this very moment, I allow myself to go deeper and deeper into the silence and I bring whatever I wish to release to the Holy Spirit to transform what I have difficulty transforming.
And now I bring to mind anyone who may be in need of prayer, those on the unity prayer list on silent unity, all those in the world who are suffering through war or prejudice or racism, sexism, inequality. We pray for all those who would harm another, who would intentionally harm another. So we pray for all the suffering, those on the receiving end and the giving end. And we pray for an elevation of consciousness in all humankind so that each person will realize that what they do to others, they actually do to themselves. We know there is only the one of which we are all part of. And we are so grateful for this awareness. So grateful for the awareness of oneness. And we move through our day centered in the Christ that is within. Amen. So I invite you to bring your consciousness back into your body, back into the room where you are. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. I'm so grateful that you were able to join us today. Um, this is, uh, will be on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, and on our website. So if you'd like to uh, revisit them, feel free. If you're watching the live stream, feel free to enter, enter any comments or questions you have in the, in the, during the live stream on the chat. And again, thank you for joining us. Have a great week.